then you can also always claim that the guy who made the training data was an idiot and, and it was his fault. That <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, it was the other guy. You sent me a, a link to an article about how to generate code. Uh, and uh, one of the um, things that mentioned is that uh, when you're doing pair pro uh, programming, uh, you could, in, instead of sitting with another person, you could actually let the computer assist you. So it could correct uh, your code if you were making uh, errors or could come up with their suggestions of whatever kind. And you yeah. know, when I come to think of it, that's what I would call extreme programming. Okay. Well, extreme programming is a concept uh, of, of, of program that has pair programming as a, a very part, a very important part but I think the extreme part here would be to replace another human being, a programmer, with the computer. Yeah. And uh, do you think it would be good enough? Uh, I would say that the tools I use today, especially when I'm coding JavaScript and PHP, mm -hmm. um, are some IntelliSense uh, stuff that looks at the code and if it finds some obvious errors in the code, it kind of doing the same thing as the compiler does in Dataflix. You do it pre-compiled, but uh, what it does, it's, it's highlighting in the code where you have issues instead of giving you a list of issues afterwards. Um, and uh, that is really helpful. And, and I can also see in the editor which files contain errors that I might want to look at. Um, and and uh, that is really helpful when doing uh, code. But this is the, the article uh, in the GPT-3 solution is kind of a little bit step ahead. I think it goes further than that. Yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, because what it does is it's it has learned uh, coding concepts from a lot of different uh, already written code and I'm, I'm wondering if um, someone might uh, argue that they are stealing some code from someone else um, that has been written and part being part of the training data so you need to make sure that all the code it's training on is actually open source code so that you're allowed to to let the algorithm complete it for you. Ah, because but that solves another problem here. Okay. I think, yeah, well, I was thinking uh, it's related to, you know, what if you get some nasty bugs in your software mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, uh, driverless uh, car drives into another car, you know, because of a bug that you made. Then you can also always claim that the guy who made the training data was an idiot and it was his fault. That was introduced to your code. It wasn't me, it was the other guy. Uh, yeah. yeah, even though uh, basically what it boils down to is that you more or less write the name of the function you want to create and this system will auto complete the function for you. But I wouldn't go as far as to just uh, trust that everything is is uh, working in that function. I would probably go through it and see if I can find any bugs or improvements that could be made to, to that function before I let it uh, into my production. Uh, and, and as doing so, it's kind of my responsibility again as a developer to make sure that the code is working. Mm. So one only hopes then, then that the computer generated code, uh, code is not too obfuscated. Yeah. So that you can actually read it. You can actually read the code. I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of uh, the prerequisite. But I think um, what it looks like is that it's actually quite clean code that it has been training on. So, uh, and, and there are at least uh, out to syntax uh, indentators that can make sure the code looks great. I think they have added that as well to the to the output of the function. So they should be quite readable. 
you know, the guys who are making these things here, mm -hmm. they're kind of traitors, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me, it seems to me that one of the important drives in, 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 in society uh, right now, you know, is how do we get rid of the coders? How can we make computers, uh, make program themselves? How do we, because there's a yeah, but, but programmers I, I, I do that myself. Every day I try to improve the number of things I can create with as few lines of code as possible. Um, and uh, when you write a function, you, you call that from multiple places, you're, you're mm -hmm. actually, um, instead of rewriting that function on several locations, you're actually cheating yourself or <laughs> maybe uh, maybe not cheating yourself but uh, if you're reusing that function for another client later on then you can just do a copy paste and the new client doesn't have to pay for that function or the hours you spent creating that yes but um, you know honestly a lot of functions that you create you create because you enjoy the intellectual challenge of making a beautiful function, you know, <laughs> and, and, and in that way, um, I, I think, you, I mean, if you have a function and it used once, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the idea of, of making the function is, well, for me, it's it breaking down my thoughts into uh, chunks that I, my, my, my rather limited intelligence can overview um so that that would be the purpose of making functions that are only used once but um yeah, yeah. so oh the well. intention of, of making functions is yeah. to actually use them multiple times to reuse them well, not necessarily not necessarily uh but yes if you can use them more than one time or in more than one project yes yeah but but you know, yeah, that's true. But but it, that kind of functions, um, I can only download because somebody else done them already. Uh, yeah, and and I actually, what this uh, plugin does uh, is more or less downloading it for you hmm. and completing the code for you. No, no, I think I was into I was thinking about something interesting, you know. Uh, in 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 the code suggestions here mm -hmm. i mean just code completion uh, you have that in, in ide you know you just press sequence on the button and they will finish the line of code that you were writing on because there really is only one way to do it here like for instance uh when you type a database to field you get a, some selection or if you if you make a typo then code completion doesn't work anymore and you know you made a typo. Otherwise, it would come up as a suggestion. Yeah. yeah. And then again, sometimes you didn't make a typo. But there really weren't any way of completing the code for you. It's like, you know, I think I would feel it. it I, I, I think I will switch it off, you know, immediately. I'm thinking of the autocomplete in IMAX, you know, iPhones. I hate them. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> when, when you write an SMS or yeah, 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 it knows better, you know. Yeah. And it comes up some dreadful examples of. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I. But it will compile. It will compile. <laughs> but in, nobody yeah, knows what it yeah, does. Yeah. In, in uh, Gmail, you have an autocomplete in your emails. I actually mm -hmm. use that quite a lot, but that's only like two words or something that appear uh, from time to time. I was uh, trying very hard to write an email yesterday mm -hmm. and I was typing it in webmail client that was configured to speak Danish but I was writing in English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And and, 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 you know, you have a really tough time tidying up afterwards, you know. 
because we're humans. We do various things different, you know, from each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and that might also be an issue if the uh, uh, the uh, AI is creating code that contains a certain type of syntax or or indentation or something that uh, or writing variable names in a different way than you are used to, and then you have to rewrite everything because you, you want it your way. Just imagine this, you know, you're having this discussion with your computer. I said, sorry, Klaus, I cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> Open the vent. <laughs> Open the <laughs> ventilation door. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, Klaus, I cannot do that. <laughs> I cannot do that. No. Yeah, well. Um, yeah. I don't know if, if it's really practical. Uh, it, 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 the good thing about it is it is not coming to my preferred programming language in a time soon, as far as I can see, so. Nah, you never know, because if if they, uh, if you just supply it with enough training data, you might be able to just uh, uh, plug in your own programming language and uh, have it uh, learn that in a few minutes, uh, and then you can use it in your own ID. So uh, you never know. Now they've kind of broken the ice for uh, for auto completing code. How do you think all of those prima donnas out there will re react when they get a system like that, which basically tells that everything that you write or have ever written is so damn unoriginal, you know, so a computer can do it for you. <laughs> yeah, hmm. it's that's going to be popular. <laughs> I, I think. Uh, in, in all of these surveys, um, the people who are most afraid that AI will take over their jobs is uh, developers. Mm -hmm. And I think um, this is where it begins. But there's another aspect to it. And that is uh, what this does is more or less the same thing that you do by typing the function name in Google and finding a function that does what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, it will just create it in your application instead of you finding it on, on Google. So the, the difference isn't that big uh, in this case either. You still need someone who makes a decision and talks to the customer and figure out what functions to make in the first place. Now, suppose, uh, suppose that I wanted to create a function that add two figures, two numbers, sorry. Yeah. So that two and two equals four every time you add them together, you know. Mm -hmm. And you insist to call this function concat. Yeah. So uh, the computer thinks, okay, I will come up with a result that will uh, yield a uh, with the same code that will yield a result 22 instead of four. Yeah. Because he's obviously concatenating. He wants to concatenate his two. Otherwise, he wouldn't have called it that. But I mean, I call my function a lot of stuff, you know. And sometimes I even use Danish. Yeah. So that would be quite confusing for the AI, I suppose. I hope I, I would confuse it, yes. Yeah. That's uh, do. But um, I have uh, registered for it. And um, there's obviously a queue line to get access to it. So let's see you. Maybe we make another video when when I have tried it a bit. Okay. If I ever okay. get access to it. If you ever get access to it, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'll to complete you. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, we could end it that, and then yeah. uh, let's see what happens. Yes. Let's yep. See. Bye now. Bye bye.